Prediction markets aim to translate information into probability. When a market shows high confidence in an outcome, it should reflect collective wisdom through price discovery. Let's examine a case where this mechanism encountered some interesting complications. The question was straightforward. Would Israel and Hezbollah agree to a ceasefire by year's end? The rules required both parties to officially declare a pause across all theaters of conflict, including Syria, where Hezbollah, a military organization distinct from the Lebanese state, maintains active operations. Watch what happens when Polymarket adds this banner, declaring credible media consensus of a ceasefire. The price surge suggests the market suddenly gained remarkable confidence in a yes outcome. But did this price movement reflect new information or something else entirely? The agreement's text reveals four critical gaps in satisfying market conditions. One, the agreement was signed between Israel and Lebanon, not Israel and Hezbollah. Two, instead of participating as a party, Hezbollah appears only as an entity Lebanon promises to restrain. Three, while covering Lebanese territory, the agreement leaves other active conflict zones unaddressed. Four, Hezbollah never made an official declaration. Meanwhile, Israeli operations continued near Damascus within days. Military engagements also persisted across South Lebanon. By mid-December, official sources confirmed ongoing operations, a direct contradiction to claims of a comprehensive cease in hostilities. December 8th, the IDF announces operations in Southern Lebanon in accordance with the understanding between Israel and Lebanon. They report dismantling weapon storage and tunnel shafts. December 11th. Another IDF statement describes the deployment of Lebanese armed forces alongside UNIFIL, again referencing ceasefire understandings and agreements regarding the ceasefire in Lebanon. Therefore, military activity continued in two primary regions after November 27th, near Damascus airstrikes on storage facilities and infrastructure. In southern Lebanon, ground operations including demolitions and counterforce activities. Both areas saw sustained engagement through December. When poly market markets are disputed, resolution power shifts to UMA, an optimistic oracle system where token holders vote to determine outcomes. Anyone can propose a resolution, but UMA holders must stake tokens to validate or challenge these proposals. In theory, this creates decentralized arbitration. In practice, of thousands of traders, only 141 addresses held voting power. Four addresses controlled 42.6% of total votes, a concentration that raises questions about decentralized decision-making. Here we encounter a critical market dynamic. Large position holders face structural inability to exit. Limited liquidity meant attempting to sell would collapse the price, shown by this theoretical liquidation curve. This created perverse incentives, transforming trap traders into advocates for premature resolution. To recap, on September 24th, the market opens. On November 27th, the Israel-Lebanon agreement is signed, then Polymarket adds consensus banner. Price spikes due to misinformation and trapped whales. On December 1st, the market concludes prematurely due to UMA pressure from trapped whales and Polymarket's banner. Polymarket and UMA represent ambitious steps toward decentralized truth discovery. Their attempt to create markets that find truth through economic incentives deserves recognition. Yet as we've seen, the gap between theory and implementation reveals fundamental challenges that can't be ignored. In our upcoming series, we'll dive deep into the mechanics. How automated market makers shape price discovery the game theory underlying optimistic oracles, and potential solutions through formal verification. Because building robust prediction markets isn't just about technology, it's about aligning incentives with truth.